Hi everyone, so I posted on the community tab that I was gonna start this present darkness and a bunch of you said that you wanted to join me so I'm so excited about that. So this video is gonna be my reading vlog for this present darkness. I have been meaning to read this all year and just what I know what it's about and the title and the cover and just everything about it has kind of made me nervous to start it just because it feels like it's gonna be really deep and very thought-provoking and just it's not a light read so I just haven't felt ready for it I've I've wanted to but I just haven't felt ready so I just was like you know what if I don't do it now I might not do it this year and I really do want to read this before the end of the year so I figured posting about it would hold me accountable and get me to actually read it and now I'm like really excited and I did start it already and I think I'm gonna really like it so I'm so glad that I posted about it and thank you to everyone who interacted with that post um, I guess it's probably a week old by now I don't know how long it's gonna take me to read this but I will vlog every day that I read it and update you and hopefully this is kind of like interactive for you if you are reading it along with me um, we can discuss it in the comments so I might actually make this a spoilery reading vlog just because if you, a lot of you are going to read it with me, then I'm sure a lot of you will not be spoiled because you're reading it. And plus this is an older book, so I, I know a lot of people have read it. So I actually didn't even know what this was about going into it, so I actually kind of went in blind. I figured that it followed a church because there's a picture of a church down here, and then some scary looking claws coming down on it, so yeah, I, anyways, I ended up reading chapter one today. It is Monday that I, I posted the, the post and I started this. Um, and chapter one is just a couple pages. And so first impressions are the writing is a little bit convoluted, like a little bit hard to get into because there's a lot of description. I think they're really trying to set the mood because it feels kind of like there's this darkness going on. Um, you're in this small town of Ashton, I think, and you open with these two men um, walking around. And at first I was like, are these demons or angels? I don't really know. And then it turns out they're angels, right? Uh, that's the thing, like the writing, if you miss anything, you miss it. <laughs> so this is not a skimmable book, it seems because I started skimming some of the description and then I got to a part where I was like, what? I And then I was lost, so I had to like go back and actually read it. So, you know, my skimming technique isn't gonna work with this book. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, I was already blown away by this first chapter. It starts out very mysterious, but then it goes to the church and the man who's praying it, and I'm assuming it's the pastor, but I don't actually know yet. And the two men are in the church and they, you know, defend the church against a demon. And if this is even a sliver close to what it's actually like, wow. Like it's very motivating already for me to like pray over myself and over my family and like for protection. And I believe that we are protected because we have Jesus in us, but like we just have access to so much power that we don't access if we don't pray. And so it's definitely motivating to pray a lot, which is good. Anyways, yeah. So, so far, I guess like if you don't know Jesus, this could be probably pretty scary or maybe you just wouldn't even know what it's referring to. It'd just be like a fantasy novel. But because I know what the figures and creatures are, it makes it feel more real, but then at the same time, I know Jesus, so I'm okay. Um, so I'm very curious about this book. I can't wait to dive into it. So this is day one. Um, I'm on chapter two. I will try to read a little bit more tonight, but I do have some editing and uploading to do. So I'm gonna try to do that, but I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you guys have a good time reading it and I will see you tomorrow. Hi everyone, so I am reading this book and I wanted to update. I just, I'm, I'm really into it. I think I'm gonna really like it. It's, like I said, it's a slower read because there's a lot of description and just like setting the mood that I guess I'm not used to. And 
it doesn't allow me to like skim it and read it really fast because like I don't want to miss anything so that's the thing we are meeting a lot of characters and I'm following it fine so far it's not too much I'm on chapter four so um, page 36 so not that far but it's funny like I already feel like I've read a lot and I'm so curious about how this is all gonna go down um, so far I'm seeing that the town is quite corrupt and embracing kind of the dark side I guess and is just not having a good time yeah um, super into it I just wanted to update I'm gonna try to read some more tonight so I will probably post on Instagram um, I don't post on my stories that much but I think I will for this book yeah I'm just so thankful that um, so many of you wanted to read it with me so it's been good so far um, I'll see you next hi time. everyone so I'm here to update on this present darkness again and I feel like for this reading vlog it's gonna be mainly just updates and like check-ins of how the readings going and not much else so I'm not gonna be going out and about and doing things um, it's just gonna be where I'm at with the book and how I'm feeling about it so yeah I just got back from school so my voice feels kind of raspy I don't know I don't know um, so I'm drinking some coffee <laughs> um, okay this book is it's fascinating and it's actually been a really it's been really good for me um, and it's only been a couple days and I'm not even a hundred pages in I'm on um, page 70 but it's it's getting into it right away which I like I really think there's something to this I, I really think that this is close to how things are and I'm not making a, a theological statement I guess I'm not trying to anyways and I'm not saying that I'm right and if you don't agree with it you're wrong just for me and my experience in my life and things that I've seen and heard about this feels the most extreme one of the more extreme cases that there can be in the supernatural and how it interacts with the physical this is deep stuff you know I, and why not like I, I feel like it's meant to be a deep book because he's literally characterizing what we can't see most of the time it just brings such awareness to the battle that is going on and we have a part to play in it and I I'm very encouraged by this book so far which might sound weird but like I'm reading it slower because now I want to soak it in I've actually reread some passages already because I'm just like if anything it is making me want to pray more it's making me want to seek after Jesus and know him and be aware of what he's trying to make me aware of it's making me want to read my Bible more and I'm so thankful for that because this is the transformation book you know that this is what transforms our lives and books like this are like supplements um, but I think the goal is to turn us towards Jesus there is serious stuff in here man like if you have ever felt insignificant in your prayer life or in a situation or wherever you are this book tells us that we are not insignificant that our prayers are powerful I'm getting pretty spiritual with this just because that's what I like to do I like to find the spiritual in the books that I read and I mean this sets you up because it's literally about angels and demons yeah so I'm just at the part where Hank the pastor called the pastor before him I forget his name um, Jim Jim Farrell and he's asking for advice he's telling him a bit of his experience and the pastor before him got voted out and but at the same time he like wanted to leave he was like it, it broke him being there and he ended up telling Hank like you should get out while you still can because it's only getting started and it's gonna get worse and it just it was so sad to see this spiritual leader being too afraid to stand up for his faith. 
And Hank is not willing to step aside. He is going to stand up for his faith. And I'm just very inspired by this book. <laughs> and so that is my update for it. I could probably sit and read this all night and finish it, but I do have other responsibilities. So um, I'm going to try to finish it over the weekend. I hope this vlog can go up around Monday. And that's the plan that it goes up Monday. So it's Thursday today. So I've got three full days left to get this read and luckily it's the weekend. So I'll definitely have lots of hours to put towards this, which I definitely want to do. But anyways, I hope that this book, this present darkness, like speaks to you guys too. And I would love to hear what it's speaking to you. Um, if you can relate it to your own life, you don't have to be specific, but I'll, I'll go as deep as you want to. So if this video can hold, um, some conversation, I, I would love that. Part of me wishes that I could have like a live discussion with you guys, maybe down the road. I'm, I'm definitely still getting comfortable with putting myself out there more often, which is like, doesn't make sense. Cause, but at the same time, like when I make a video like this, I feel safe to like say whatever I want to say because I know I can edit it. Um, but if I did like a live on my channel or, I mean, that's kind of the next thing that I'm thinking about there's no editing, you know? And you can see me live trying to figure out what I want to say, whereas normally I cut that out in my videos. So it's it's something that I, I want to try, but I'm not quite ready, I think. Um, lots more updates to come, but I love seeing the angels and how they interact with each other and then also the way they view humans. Like, they, I can just tell the angels are written in a way that they respect humanity. They value it. And I really like seeing that. And when they refer to people of God, there's just this reverence that I'm like, oh, it just like really speaks to our value, you know, as children of God. And uh, again, I'm really encouraged by that. I, I really like to see that. I think that's everything. So I'll see you in my next update. Um, Hello everyone, I am here to update. So it is Saturday now and I'm on page 222 and this book is fascinating, okay? I can't believe it. Um, I don't even know what to say. So this book has sparked a lot of discussions with my family, mainly my mom and my sister. And lots of questions because I just have never focused on how involved angels are in our life. Angels are really cool and they're on our side if you believe in Jesus. So that's nice, you know? This is going like way deeper than I expected and I guess to like show the full extent Frank Peretti chose to make it this big, but this is like, this feels like end times almost, <laughs> like, but not, but like, I feel like I'm reading it fast and yet I reread things so much because I'm like, what? Like, I'm trying to digest all of it and figure out like, I know it's a story, it's made up, but I do believe that there is truth to be found here too and I want to discern that and and I also just like considering a new perspective that I hadn't thought of before and really it's about the angels and how involved or not they are in a believer's life. So I think I'm for sure going to finish this tomorrow. That's the plan. Um, I also have been working on homework today. I've got an assignment due next Thursday and it's Saturday and still need to work on that, you know, um, but it's cool. It's like, you know, stuff. So, what am I even saying? Part of me doesn't even know how to form words to talk about this. Like if you are reading this with me, please let's talk in the comments. And also let's pray. Like, can we be reminded to pray over ourselves and our family and our homes and our towns? Like, and to just have faith that Jesus is 
the one who holds the victory. And even if you look like you're defeated, because like I can relate to so much of this in the sense that it feels like like there's times when it feels like God is silent and that he's letting all of these terrible things happen and where is he when all of this is happening and we we just don't understand his ways but I think like this book opens up the idea that he is always active and there's always a plan working out we just we just don't get to know the full picture because we just can't like you know, we're not in charge here, and but we have a part to play, and there's always hope, and I'm just like, <laughs> it's really getting me to think. I, I do like it a lot, and I don't know what to say, so <laughs> get ready, because I'll for sure be reading the sequel, probably not right after this, but in November or December, before the end of the year, for sure. Uh, how could I not, you know? From a couple of you, I've heard that the sequel isn't as good, but I don't care. I wanna read it. I want to just, I don't know, just keep learning about this. I also wanna look up interviews with Frank Peretti. I wanna look up stuff about him, like, how did he come to write this? I need to know, <laughs> you know? And like, when I Googled this book, the ratings are super high, which I'm very surprised because like, is this considered controversial or are like Angels and Demons more accepted than other books that fictionalize spiritual things? Because I feel like, like books like this are controversial and cause a stir in the Christian community. And, and yet this one like seems to be very popular but I'm just thinking of like other books and why they weren't popular. They were, but they also had a lot of hate. Is there hate for this book? Cause I haven't seen it or heard of it, if there is. Like what makes this not as controversial, you know? Also, they keep mentioning um, Babylon because there's like a head demon that is the Prince of Babylon, he's called. And then there's a head angel that like fought that demon in Babylon at some point and the angel won but I wish I could hear that story like Babylon as in like way back in the day like you know AD BC time or not I guess I don't know my Christian history very well because I know there were Christians in Babylon but was there like a spiritual battle that went on there and the Christians won because apparently the angel won and the demon wants a rematch and this is kind of the rematch. I don't know. Um, yeah, but I'm very curious about that so I kind of want to Google it. Um, I want to quickly throw this in. Um, my bookmark is sideways because I'm still reading it but I did start this book as well and it's kind of pairing really well with this but also really well with just the state of things because yeah, Charles Martin is looking at Jesus's commission for the disciples and kind of all the things that happened after Jesus ascended and then what it means for us current day Christians. Are we supposed to live like the disciples did? Can we do the things that the disciples did? Are we supposed to? Can we believe what the Bible says? All that kind of stuff, um, really good stuff. So what a nice pretty book too, right?
Hi everyone. So I finished This Present Darkness and I am giving it five stars. I loved this book. Um, two nights in a row I stayed up pretty late reading it because I just was so captured by it. It, I feel like it was a really well told story. Like the, the spiritual aspects aside, I thought the plot was really good and I just like how it all came together at the end because of the nature of this book and most of the time I feel this way about all stories but um, especially if it's a Christian book I don't mind when like a miracle is used as a plot device I guess you could say it, it's funny to say that but like a lot of miracles happened in this book that like the story would fall apart if they didn't happen and I just think that's really cool because like that's how God is so involved in writing our stories and he saves us when we can't save ourselves and I just I thought it all really fit well there's a lot of times that are just like you know miracles and like angels intervening it worked for me I really liked it um the the clip before this not me on the couch but before that um I definitely could not gather my thoughts I didn't even know what I was saying it it's one of those books where you just have to sit with it for a bit I think and pray and really ask God like what do you want me to take out of this how is my life going to change from this because it feels like it it is life-changing like to to think about your role in prayer and just your relationship with Jesus and following him I just love it <sighs> ah yeah and I also uh, made a quotes page in my bullet journal because there were there were whole scenes that I wanted to write down, but like I tried to just pick the key parts of it. Um, I posted this on my story, but I kind of like made a little color pattern and I wrote out some quotes and then there was more. So I made another one um, and these ones have like more in them. But yeah, I... And I, I feel like I want to pick a favorite scene, but I don't know if I can because, well, no, I do know what my favorite scene is <laughs> and it might be a weird one. Yeah, this is my favorite scene. Okay, um, so hopefully you've read the book. I didn't go into that many spoilers just because like there was so much. My favorite part of the whole book was th the reaction that the demons had anytime anyone was praying. I loved seeing that because I've heard my whole life that like, at the name of Jesus demons have to flee and like demons hate prayer and they hate when you worship and they hate your faith and so when you're using your faith and and exercising it in a situation um, the demons like cower and they hate it and they're powerless against it and this book showed that so many times and I loved it every single time like any time someone was praying and a demon was around they would like shriek and get angry and they'd have to run o run away or like they would lash out or something and every time and even if it's like in your head too and even if it's a whisper even if it's just the name of Jesus like any part of you that is reaching out to him it counts and and the demons hate it and it just was cool to see that because when you feel so insignificant in your prayer life it's just not it's just not and I I just love it so I'm so encouraged by this book there were a couple moments not that many like two scenes that made me like slightly uncomfortable because they were pretty they were not that detailed but they they were detailed in like psychic stuff possession and stuff it was it was like oh I I don't know, man. Uh, I feel protected from that, but I also never want to expose myself to it. So to read it was kind of strange. I haven't even talked about my favorite scenes. See, <laughs> I'm all, even all over the place. But anyways, yeah, with the possession stuff, the scenes where they're like chanting a demon's name or, I mean, that was the main thing. I hated the like chanting part. I was like, Ugh, I get through this really quick. It's just like, it just felt so wrong in me, you know? It, because that's just never something that I would ever want to have any 
part in. But I think to show the two extremes was necessary, like to see the power of Jesus, but to see that like, it has to be pretty big power to beat this evil. Like evil is powerful too. Okay, and my favorite scene, um, it involves Mary. She's the pastor's wife. It's when she's going to get groceries and she's loading them in her car and she has an angel with her that she doesn't know and a pack of demons comes. Did I talk about this? I'm getting flashbacks. Did I talk about this already? Anyways, that's my favorite scene. Um, the demons come and like apprehend the angel and then try to attack Mary. They have like possessed a man to go and like harass her. She gets away and really the the last part of that scene is what made it a favorite because um, to be honest, that's one of my fears <laughs> um, that I would be powerless against someone who is trying to hurt me and to see her be so terrified and she's in her car just like crying out to Jesus and then the angel comes and like touches her shoulder and like comforts her and says, you're safe, the Lord is here he has not abandoned you like he is gonna take care of you and all of that i just like i cried at that scene like i just it, that is the the god that i need in my life like the one who knows and sees my fears and saves me from them yeah that's my favorite <laughs> scene from the book i think um but i loved so many parts of it you know and so many quotes, like I don't even know if I could pick a favorite quote either. There's a an older lady in the book uh, named Edith and she was wonderful. And this is one of her quotes. She said, God is moving and Satan doesn't like it. We need to pray and we need to get other people praying. And I think that really encapsulates the book. Like God is moving on behalf of the prayers of his people and saving these people um, and Satan doesn't like it. So he's going to attack with equal force and really prayers are what tip the scale for us. Like God really works with us to defeat the enemy. Yeah, I'm encouraged and I would love to hear what you guys think of it. Um, just because I love it, I, I, I'm not gonna be like annoyed if you didn't love it or like if there's something about it that you're like, wish that wasn't there or I actually hated it or whatever. I'd be very curious why you would feel that way. But at the same time, I already can understand like, it really goes there and it almost sounded like the apocalypse like it they, they didn't like there was no antichrist I mean there kind of was I guess but like that was never in talks like it was never even mentioned that oh this is the end of the world like whatever but they were talking about like the demons wanted to start a new world order and take over the world basically and that sounds a lot like revelation to me um so it's interesting that he pulled from that and uh, but it it was not meant to be that i don't think but i think like he went to that most extreme just to really show to like have a lot to 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 show in this book of like spiritual warfare so yeah i uh i liked it so that's my video <laughs> thank you for watching thank you for being so encouraging to me on my post about it and I definitely want to do more things like this where I post about a book and we read it together. And I, yeah, I just really like that. So let me know if you'd be interested in doing it for the second one. I I can't guarantee I'll be able to do it in November. I've got a pretty big TBR for November already, but for sure December um, I would pick it up. But either way, I'll post about it. And hopefully, I guess maybe now you know, try to get your hands on the second book and be ready for that if you can. I'll try to like post about it like a couple days before I'm actually gonna start it so then you don't feel like, like if you wanna read it at the same time I am. I know that some people are still reading it. I posted it about it a week ago and I'm done it now, but um, if you're not finished, that's fine. Also, I guess you watched this, so maybe, I didn't talk about super big spoilers. I think that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for reading this book with me. Um, I pray that God will speak to you through it. I pray that it wouldn't cause fear, but it would cause like a stirring in your heart to seek him in his word and, and pray and ask him like, meet me here. What do I do now? You know, um, that's kind of where I'm at. I feel like, I feel like I'm like, God, what do you want me to take away from this? 
what what do I do now? <laughs> I, I need some direction. So that's what I'll be praying. So yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching you guys. Have a great day. Bye.